Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. We've gone through plenty of official works in the tenure of this series. Some of them high-end, others more independent. I think it's high time we covered something fan-related. So, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Despite its popularity, it's always something I've had a love-hate relationship at best with. I like the concepts at play. I like its use of mythos, and some of the better-made characters. But its main cast tries a little too hard at the goal of deconstructing the super robot genre. To put it another way, I like the world of Ava more than its characters. Thusly, using the canvas of that setting without referencing the story in the anime would be prime for role-playing, in my opinion. Enter Adeptus Evangelion. One of the classic cases of 4chan's TG board getting shit done. Adeptus Evangelion, hereafter known as Ad Ava, originally started out as a heavily modified version of Dark Heresy. As time passed, it expanded into a work of its own that tried to shed its 40k roots to a certain degree with some disagreements ending up in side editions like Borderline. For the purposes of this review, we'll be covering the third edition. Does it still hold up, or did the drama unravel at all? Let's find out. A minor point before we begin. I'm establishing a new rule from here on when it comes to fan works or similar affairs. I'll be skipping the layout section for this review. Being a fan-made product, it wouldn't be fair to judge it on the same merits of look that you would put on professional-level work. Besides, I don't have any real issue with the presentation here anyways. Given the source material, we'll be doing a pilot and their personal Evangelion using 3rd edition's Tree of Life system. Our pilot here is known as Shiro IV, and his assigned Ava is AST number 4. The first step is Roots, the origin and innate advantages of the pilot. In addition, each root gains proficiency in four skills listed among its potential skills. For this, we'll go with Visionary. This grants us a plus 3 bonus to Sync Ratio and Intelligence, and we must also pick one social drawback when the time comes. Five of that drawback's depth doesn't count towards assets. As for potential skills, we'll go with inference, notice, recall, and symbolism. Second is personal scores, your four primary characteristics, physique, intelligence, empathy, and sync ratio, the latter most determining the connective strength between the pilot and their Ava. This is generated with the root as a base and adding 2d6 to each, with the exception of sync ratio that has you roll 2d6 twice and choose the higher result. Since Shiro is a visionary, his starting scores are 20, 23, 20, and 33. After rolling these scores, the results are 32 physique, 31 intelligence, 29 empathy, and 42 sync ratio. Third is drawbacks, assets, and aspects. The first to the equivalent to advantage and disadvantages in other games, and much like in those games, you're able to take drawbacks to gain assets. Each drawback grants a certain amount of depth, and you can't have more than 15 depth total. As mentioned before, because we're a visionary, we have to start with one mental drawback that doesn't grant us 5 depth. We'll go with Touched in this case. The other ones we'll go with are Medicated and Open Mind, for a total of 15 depth to spend on assets. As for assets, we'll go with Prodigy, Complex Extension, and Sync Flux. Aspects are equal parts motivation and personality. Mechanically, they're the primary means of gaining luck during play. The three types of aspects are Defining, General, and Trauma. Characters start with one Defining and two General aspects. In our case, we'll go with Otherworldly as the Defining aspect, and Logical as the General aspect. Fourth are the Ripple Effects, the derived statistics for the pilot. First is Stress and Ego. These determine a character's ability to handle mundane frustrations, whilst Ego deals with the mental threats brought by the concepts of AT fields and Angel Minds. Your starting values for these are based on either intelligence or empathy, respectively, as you assign one to each. After that, you round to the nearest five. This makes Shiro's stress and ego to be 30 each after rounding them. While the major skill groups have their derived ability already set, the awareness, trickery, and will skill groups can use either intelligence or empathy. Since it's the higher score, we'll go with intelligence for all three. Lastly, the strain threshold. This is used for determining the pilot's ability to withstand damage the Ava takes. Being based on the 10th digit of the physique score, Shiro's is 4 due to his high sync ratio. Fifth is where we choose an Ava. The first step in bringing it to life, named AST4 as mentioned before, grants it the following starting layout. Martial 70, Firearms 50, Strength 4, Toughness 6, Armor 3, and Reflexes 30. 
as well as two upgrades, Requisition and Wing Loadout Storage. To personalize the AVA, there are certain distinguishing features that can be rolled upon a few tables. In AST4's case, we'll be going with Mutation, Cosmetic, and History. On these tables, we rolled an 80, 35, and 69, respectively gaining Apex Product, Glowing Eyes, and Excavated features. Step 6 is where the Advancement Scheme is developed, the Tree of Life as it's known. This is split between the core set of available talents, known as the Trunk, and the specialization known as the Root. If you're raising an eyebrow at the latter, it's intentional. The root you pick from at the start plays a factor in which root you have in the Tree of Life. In addition, there are several other specializations you can access known as branches. The trunk grants the Spread Pattern Basic Field 1 and the AT Power Neutralize 1, while the Visionary Branch grants 1 Luck. Finally, there is the matter of spending XP and Enrichment. The difference between the two resources is that XP typically concerns combat, while Enrichment concerns the pilot. This can vary depending on the game in question, but for the purposes of this, we'll say that Shiro has 50 XP and 4 Enrichment. With this, we'll spend XP on the Boost Reflexes and Basic Manipulation Barrier Trunk Advances, the Redundant Organs Ava Branch Upgrade, and the Empathy Minor Advance with Enrichment. Character creation is a little different here than in its previous iterations. I could see the more narrativist parts of it being tricky for some. The biggest issue at play is organization, specifically the smaller bits like starting ego and stress, or how sync ratio can affect other stats. Additionally, I'm not sure how I feel about XP being used for both personal upgrades and upgrades for the Ava. Making this more of an issue is that there's a kind of ranking system for every 100 XP spent, but enrichment doesn't factor into this. It kind of reminds me of how Insight ranks in Legend of the Five Rings almost discourage spending experience on things other than attributes or skills. It muddies the two upgrade currencies. Overall, character creation here is a flawed gem. Owing to its Dark Heresy roots, Adeva uses a roll under D100 system based on the attribute used. Any result under the number is considered a success. Luck is the closest that this game has to an extra effort mechanic, but the bulk of its use is to force narrative changes. Its opposite, however, is Doom. This can increase when luck is used to influence events, and makes luck effects more expensive. In the anime, what an AT field actually stands for is ill-defined, despite being integral to the narrative. In Adeva, AT stands for Absolute Territory. During combat, this is used in conjunction with your sync ratio to determine how well you can use the AT field. First, your sync ratio determines your AT strength and potential. The former determines what powers are accessible to you, while the latter is a pool you may spend to enhance powers. The effects of confronting horrific angels mentally is reflected with stress and ego. Whenever either of these are maxed out, you suffer a trauma, essentially a breakdown or disruption, and your maximum is reduced by 5. The latter only happens when the total loss is half of its starting value, and again when it is reduced to 10 or less. It's also worth noting that many of the traumas are ranked and play into the aspect system mentioned before. Finally, while combat is fairly standard with a decent economy of action, I do like the way damage works here. When damage is inflicted, if there's any remaining after armor, that amount is compared to toughness. If it's less, it's considered a glancing hit and added to the damage pool. On its own, the damage pool has no effect. But for every 15 points the damage pool accumulates, the target gains one critical momentum. This adds to the final damage in subsequent attacks, and if it beats toughness, it's treated as a critical hit. As a result, combat is less of an assembled bomb and rather a thousand cuts. I think the only issue I have, beyond the organization problems, is the downward spiral possibly being too unforgiving. This is going to vary from group to group, but the fact that there's no real reset after stress and ego breaks does bother me a little. I'd prefer a method to buy off these effects during downtime a la Tenra, but that's just me. I'm not fond of having games have a preset expiration date like this. I could also see the potential of the pools being present a bit too much. Either way, it's a net positive for what the game wants to be even if it's involving things I don't personally agree with at times. While its narrative aspects might be a little controversial, I think Adeptus Evangelion does a decent job with its mechanics and advancement. If it has any real issues, it's that of organization and a degree of micromanagement. Some rules take a bit of work to find, but I can't be too harsh on the case here because it's a fan game. The micromanagement is going to be up for debate, but the mix of numbers management for both the characters, the point system regarding base resources, this could be a potential issue. Even with all that, I feel confident in giving the game a stamp of recommended. 
Ad Ava arguably does a better job of presenting what's important than its source material, but if you prefer something a little more crunchy, I'd recommend looking back into the 2.5 edition. Either way, the fate of the world is in your hands. Don't fuck it up, pilot.